All right, chemistry, we're going to be talking about titrations today. So I thought I'd uh, go over a little bit about what it would look like if you were doing this in a lab. So titrations are very much lab-oriented type things because what we're really trying to do is we're trying to neutralize our acid-base reaction. Find the, the point at where the hydroxide ion and the hydronium ions are balanced. So, so we're going to try to make this neutralized. in which we're going to balance our hydronium ions and the hydroxide ions. So now typically what we would do is we would start with something like a, a container that's going to have in it an aqueous solution of either something that's an acid or a base. And then I'm going to start with say a, an acid. So I'm going to put in a bunch of our acid type particles. So these are the hydronium ions in solution and we're going to just put a lot of them in there. So we've got a lot of those and maybe we just have a couple of these okay, to show that there is some dissociation happening with the water. So again we're looking at this and we'd say that maybe we could check our pH and and maybe our pH is going to be something like in the range of like a 2. Okay, so we know that this is going to be a container that contains some acid. And now what we're going to do is we're going to titrate it. We're going to find out what the, you know, kind of concentration is a little bit more uh, specifically. We're going to do this by running a burette. Okay, which is just a long piece of glassware that has a valve on it that allows us to put in tiny drops of whatever the solution is that we want to use. And so we're going to put into this some solution, and this one's going to be more basic. So we're going to have this be something that has a lot of base in it. Okay, so this is something that we would have of a known concentration. Actually, that's what we wouldn't know this. Maybe we, this would be a question mark on the molarity. Okay, but this would be our known molarity. And we would then turn this on and we would add some of this base into this. And what we're essentially trying to do is we'd say, well, in this container, we have hydronium ions. And what we're going to add to it is going to be some hydroxide ions. And we know that when we add those two together, we're expecting there to be some balance with making water. And remember the other day we talked about this, we said that if the pH and the pOH go together, we're going to get to the point to where it would balance out and we would end up with 14 and we'd say that the concentration of both of these would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th and 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, which really says that we get to a neutralization point of where our pH is going to be 7. So we're looking to balance it out. So for every one of the red ones that are in here, we're going to have to add blue ones to this until we finally get to a point to where we're balanced and we know that we have a pH of 7. So we kind of do this um, usually doing one of two things. We, we might use an indicator that will change colors. And it'll change colors at a specific point during this process. And so by adding a very small quantity at a time, we can watch that indicator change to the point to where we would see it go from, say, um, being more acid to being more base. And there's a point in between there where we might see that change. And that's where we call that like an equivalence point. Okay, so what we're using this for is we're looking for an equivalence point.
Okay. Um, the other thing that we could do is we could use a pH meter. So we might put in, say, something that would register the pH. And again, we're watching that pH change and we're looking at the point where it is. Now again, this is a, a process that we're using to try to figure out like maybe an unknown concentration or we're trying to just get a balance point between the two. Um, so sometimes we'll see this in terms of a graph. Okay, So like this is what might happen if we were looking at this in terms of a graph. I've got a graph here. So this could be where we're looking at a container that we've put in some um, something that's a, acidic. We know that it's acidic because it's down here in the really low pH. We're going to add some sodium hydroxide to it. We're going to add it in like a, a milliliter or a fraction of a milliliter um, because the burette can adjust this down to like drops. And we might see that a drop change would change the color dramatically. So we start by adding it. Now at the beginning, it doesn't take, you know, it doesn't change a lot. So in other words, the um, hydronium ions that are present are at such a high quantity that we don't generally see a lot of change in the pH. So there's not a lot of change through this. But then we get to a point where we're really close to that tipping point. I like to think of it like a teeter-totter, where our hydro hydroxide ions now are getting close enough to the point where we're going to flip back from one side to the other side. So from a, from the hydronium ion in um, excess to all of a sudden the hydroxide ion in excess. And so when that happens, that's a pretty dramatic point that occurs. And so that's going to occur right in this area. Okay, so this is a dramatic change where just adding one drop can make us go from this pH of 2 to like a pH of 12. And so what we're doing is we're, again, looking for that equivalence point, and that's where we'd expect our indicator to start to change. So maybe our indicator goes from, say, uh, a red color or a pink color to a clear color if it was phenolphthalein. Or it could be, uh, you know, a red to a purple if it was a, more of a, um, a universal indicator. But we have lots of different indicators that can make changes at various points. So that's where we're kind of looking at that change is where's that equivalence point. Um, so this is where we wanted to kind of get you to this point. Um, I have posted both the um, activity and the practice problems. If you want at this point, you may want to jump in and try the activity. Um, if you are one that would rather do some of the practice problems first and save the activity for last, um, I'm going to go ahead and continue on and we'll talk about how to do some of the sample problems. Um, but if you want to do the activity, go ahead and do that and come back to the sample problems. Either way, both assignments are due at the same time. So they're both due um, at the same time. So you, it's your choice to kind of decide which way you want to go. All right, so we're going into like a problem now about how we would use the information that we get from a titration. So let's say that, for instance, um, we have some unknown solution of hydrochloric acid. So we have an unknown concentration of some hydrochloric acid. And we're going to start with... Um, a certain quantity. So let's say we are going to put 10 milliliters of the acid it was like placed into our beaker and it was found that we only needed to use like um, three mils of a 0 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide to neutralize. Okay, so essentially we took our beaker, we 
started with a known quantity, so that was going to be our 10 milliliters. We added from here to here 3 milliliters. And we know this, and we don't know the concentration there. So that's kind of our setup for our, our um, problem here. Now, typically when we do this, the first thing that we want to do is come up with what does the balanced equation look like. So we know that this is HCl. We know that this is NaOH. And we know that we're going to see a neutralization process in which our, uh, we're going to make our water and our salt. And everything here is a one-to-one -one relationship, so we don't have to worry about that. I know that from the sodium hydroxide, I have three mils of this, and I have a 0 0.05 molar concentration. And what I'm looking for is um, of the 10 milliliter sample I have here, what was the concentration? So this is, I'm setting it up to look like my stoichiometry problems. Now my process here, Okay, the thought process that I'm using is that I'm going to take this information, I'm going to find my moles, I'm going to use a, a stoichiometry step to then go from the moles of the hydroxide to the hydronium ion, and then I'm going to go back here to figure out my uh, moles of the HCl so that I can then use my molarity to find my concentration. Okay, so there's a little bit of thoughts of what's going on to how I'm going to get there. So the first step is going to be just going through and figuring out from my um, my volume and my concentration how many moles I have. Now I am going to show this is kind of a, an easy math trick here is that as long as this is in milliliters and this is in milliliters, I can just not have to worry about changing to liters. Because if I change to liters here, I'm going to have to change back to liters here, and it's just going to be a canceling math step. So it'll be a little easier for me, as long as I'm not worried about the volumes, to just leave these in milliliters. So I'm going to take my three milliliters, okay, because remember molarity, is the moles over the liters. I'm just going to times those together and get an answer here. So 3 times our 0 0.05. So we get 0 0.15. Now this is the moles of the NaOH. Okay, now the way that the sodium hydroxide splits apart, okay, we should look at that, is that when it dissociates, it dissociates to form only one hydroxide. So we're going to set up and do like one mole of NaOH is one mole of OH ions. So now this is like a mole ratio step. Okay. And this mole ratio step is really about the dissociation of our base. So we're trying to go through and make sure that our base is, um, we're figuring out how much hydroxide ions we have. Now, the relationship for neutralization says that for every one mole of OH, it's going to be one mole of H3O ions. So the relationship between the OH and the hydronium ions is a one-to-one -one relationship because that's that same one that we expect to see in water. So that's like another mole ratio. And then finally we're going to do a mole ratio back to look at our acid. So again, our acid when it dissociates is a one-to-one -one relationship. So one of these will produce one of the hydrogen ions. So we'll set that up like a mole ratio as well. So one mole of the H3O ions will make one mole of our hydrochloric acid ions. 
So the nice thing is, is that we're really looking at this and saying that the, the moles are all going to be a one-to-one -one relationship. So whatever the concentration, or excuse me, however many moles of the NaOH we have, we're going to end up with the same number of, of HCl moles in the end. Now we can use this moles and convert ourselves back into concentration. So we know that our moles was 0 0.01, or excuse me, 0.15 moles. And we did this with uh, 10 milliliters. So when we multiply this together, or divide by 10, we know that our concentration was This, this is just kind of an easy example to look at because everything is a one-to-one -one relationship and we're, we are going to have some where we're going to have some non-one-to-one -one relationships. So let's say that we're going to do, I'll do one more example and show how it's different if we had a different uh, type of, um, of acid or a different type of base and we'll see if we want, so instead of actually finding um, the concentration, we're going to find the pH. So let's say that we have a, a solution of acetic acid. Okay. Uh, and we're going to use, say, 15 milliliters. And we're going to titrate it with, uh, let's go with, we're going to titrate it. It only took like uh, 1.5 milliliters of um, a 0. 2,5 molar. This time we're going to go with barium hydroxide. Okay, and what we want to find out is what is the pH? So this is a situation where we're trying to figure out the pH. We don't have a pH meter to work with. Um, and so we're just going to do a quick titration on this to kind of see where we're at. Um, we're going to start with our balanced chemical equation. So we have our um, acetic acid, which is the HC2H3O2. So that's that acetate ion connected with the hydrogen. We're going to add to that some barium hydroxide. We know that this reaction is going to be a neutralization process, so it's going to make some water. And then we're going to get that barium acetate. But again, that barium acetate would stay aqueous in solution. So that's a reaction there. We're going to need to have two of these to kind of balance it out, and that's going to make two of those. So we're going to start here by well, we're looking for the pH of this solution and we know that we're using uh, what was it we had 15 milliliters and we know that we're going to use 1.5 milliliters here and this is going to be of a 0 0.25 molar solution so same kind of process here I'm thinking about going through using this to figure out my moles and then I got to get from moles there to the hydroxide ions and then from the hydroxide ions to the hydronium ions and once I'm at that hydronium ions I can use that in my volume to figure out my concentration 
and then I'm going to figure out my pH. Okay, so we're going to kind of go through this process here. So let's go ahead and, and set up our stoichiometry looking relationship. So we're going to start by first taking our volume and our concentration and, and multiplying it to get our moles. Now in this one, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and we're just going to multiply those two together to get our concentration or to get our moles. But remember, it's not truly the moles because we're not using liters. So if I take my 1.5 milliliters, I'm going to times it by my 0 0.25 molarity. I'm going to get, so 1.5 times 0.25, a 0 0.375. This is essentially the moles of the BaOH2. Now again, from a stoichiometry relationship, we're going to, have to go one mole of the BaOH2 needs to see how many we make. And because this is a, a two hydroxides to every one of these, and when this dissociates, we know that we're going to form two moles of the OH ions in solution. Okay, so that's a one to two relationship. Now, the neutralization process is always a one to one, so one mole of the OH ions will give us one mole of our H ions. And then once we get to that point, we're going to use that to figure out our concentration. So now I'm going to take this, I'm just going to go times two. So I get 0 0.75 as the moles of the H plus ions. Now I'm going to divide that by my um, concentration or by my um, milliliters that I used so that we figure out what our concentration was originally. Now that I know my concentration I can set up a pH calculation so the pH is just equal to the negative log of that concentration log and get the negative. So it looks like our pH of our solution was a 1.3. Okay. Um, that should get you started on doing the practice and if you do have some questions we can always uh, ask them in, during class time and we can go over some of these in class.